Vibriti presents the Game Changer Summit. Hello and a very warm welcome to Vibriti presents the Game Changer Summit in partnership with CNBC TV 18. This podcast brings to you industry insights, inspiring entrepreneurial journeys and a look at cutting edge innovation. Welcome to a learning summit. Welcome to the Game Changers. May I first invite Vineet Sukumar, MD and CEO of Vivriti Capital and Vivriti Asset Management to tell us a little more about Vivriti, the summit, and introduce us to our experts who will be talking today about innovation in agriculture and dairy farming. Thanks, Mukda, and a warm welcome to our listeners. Vivriti was founded five years ago on the premise that mid-market India deserves access to credit. We support hundreds of mid-corporates through access to multiple debt products. Vivriti has provided over 11,000 crores of debt to its clients till date. On August 26th, we bring to you the Game Changers Summit, a celebration of entrepreneurship. You will meet people who have changed the face of their domain, be it in business, in technology, science, and sports. Our podcast series, which is a run-up to this event, powered by CNBC TV18, delves into specific sectors that are critical to India's growth, resilience, and self-reliance. Today, you will meet two remarkable entrepreneurs who have taken on the mantle to power agriculture in India through innovation in technology and aggregation. You will meet Ranjit Mukundan, an engineer and master's in technology with two and a half decades of experience in building businesses in technology and consulting. Ranjit founded Stellabs Technologies in 2011 Stellabs seeks to unlock unprecedented value across the dairy supply chain via farm to fridge digitization of the largest crop on the planet. You will also meet Mayank Dhanuka, an engineer and MBA with nearly two decades of experience in private equity, investment banking, and building businesses. Mayank co founded Origo Commodities in 2011. Origo provides a strong platform for stakeholders in end to end post harvest management thus ensuring an extremely smooth and sustainable agri-commodity management. With this, I will hand it back to Mukta to take the podcast forward. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Sukumar. Joining me now, Mr. Ranjit Mukundan, CEO and co-founder at Stellabs Technologies. Welcome, Mr. Mukundan. Well, technology has truly transformed the dairy industry and startups have done phenomenal work in bringing tech-driven products, services, and solutions to India. Stellabs is the first of its kind startup in India working towards the digitization of the dairy supply chain, be it milk production, milk procurement, cold chain management. And this is all being done through a very smart platform called the Smart Move platform. But Mr. Mukundan, before I speak to you about that, I'm very intrigued about something else. What led you to this industry? Take us through your journey. And was there a background in any way from the industry? no background whatsoever uh, so me and my you know co-founders come from a very hardcore tech background uh, we were working with um, it major like we pro before we started this in 2011 and we were working in the communications space um, working for uh, folks like microsoft helping them develop their uh, communication middleware you know, at and you know, Sprint, Nortel, Ericsson, that was the background. And in 2011, uh, we figured that after 15 long years in the industry, uh, we should probably spend more time solving compelling problems in the Indian context. And we spent time looking at agriculture, spent time looking at dairy. And it figured that we figured that um, there's a lot that technology can do in the agriculture space, specifically dairy. Uh, we actually lived on a farm in 2010-11, uh, spent significant amount of time there, you know, shuttling between Bangalore and those farms to figure out what exactly happens in a farmer's life, uh, starting from the early morning to late night. And we figured that technologies like Internet of Things or IoT, um, traceability, uh, grading and pricing, data, AI, ML, can solve a lot of the problems in a very interesting and compelling fashion. And that's how the whole journey started way back in 2011. 
Mr. Mukundan, dairy farming then and now, how have you seen this space evolve with tech intervention? What were the typical challenges that say existed uh, when you started looking at solutions and how have you uh, seen uh, this whole canvas, the whole narrative evolve? The dairy space uh, specifically uh, and agri space in general uh, is a hard problem. So you don't see things shifting very quickly uh, with time, uh, any intervention, any innovation takes time um, to come to fruition, unlike our urban centric problem. That said, we have seen some good pioneering work from a bunch of players in this space. We have seen more and more milk being moved from the unorganized sector to the organized sector by Amul. We have seen a uh, cold chain move closer to the farmers, uh, which means you can get higher quality, uh, you know, milk. Uh, you minimize wastages. We have seen better grading and pricing uh, in a solution uh, so that uh, farmers get paid more transparently. Um, we've seen consumer get pretty interesting products like whey proteins, uh, you know, better quality cheese, organic milk and all of that. Mm, but honestly, I don't think orbit shift has happened for the farmer. I don't think the throughput for farm has improved. I don't think yield per animal has increased. Uh, what has essentially happened is the market linkages have improved quite a bit, but for the life of a farmer has not significantly improved. And that's exactly what we're planning to change. We're trying to, by use of technology, trying to improve yield of the animal, trying to improve the throughput per farm, ensure that there is dynamic traceability uh, right through to the farm and the animals, ensure that consumers like you and I can get high quality milk, very fresh, antibiotic free, pesticide free, and get maybe innovative products like, you know, breakfast in a bottle that's typically milk driven. That's the kind of orbit shift that we're trying to create with the technology and build on top of some pioneering work that has already been done and you know, take it further. I'm sure this is also a gratifying business when it comes to changing lives of people who never thought their business was scalable. Tell us about the modern day dairy farmer, the farmer that you work with. How is, uh, you did mention that uh, uh, it is a beginning where lives are changing now and how have you seen this evolve uh, after you have joined the business? This space is fundamentally driven by smallholder farmers. I mean, there are about 90 million you know, smallholder uh, farming families, which actually feed milk to 1.3 billion uh, you know, Indians. So that's roughly the size of the US population feeding India, right? Uh, highly fragmented, each farmer has about two to three animals, produces about six to seven liters of milk you know, per day. Um, and what we are attempting to do is for these smallholder farmers, through more premium market linkages, by virtue of multiple services being provided in that village, including financial services, including agro inputs, other than market linkages and technologies such as animal wearables so that the animals can be tracked through a Fitbit that goes around the animal's leg. IoT based grading and pricing, we can actually give better price realizations to the farmer, help him improve the throughput so that, as you said, it's extremely gratifying to see when we see farmers shift orbit from being a smallholder farmer to being a you know, larger um, entrepreneur type farmer. So that's kind of the orbit shift that we're trying to create, uh, shift from a smallholder to a micro entrepreneur so that the farmer too can you know, get access to uh, you know, larger capital, better supply chain efficiencies and you know, better income levels um, in a sustainable fashion. Take us through the Smart Move platform. I particularly like the name and uh, how did that come about? And of course, uh, what are the things that are offered, are offered on the platform? For us, uh, the right from day one, the notion of tech went beyond just an application on a phone, right? Today, if you look at folks trying to address problems in the agri supply chain, um, tech and data is all about an app in a farmer's hand and a whole bunch of services that you can offer through cloud. There's nothing wrong with that, but we went a step beyond it. We actually developed our own hardware. We developed hardware on the farm side, such as, as I mentioned, a Fitbit for the cattle that goes on the cat's leg, where the battery life can come for five years, unlike a human Fitbit or a pet Fitbit. 
uh, the battery life plays a very important factor in cattle feedback. Mm, we do things like facial recognition of animals to uniquely recognize animals so that when you underwrite insurance risk, uh, the ID management is more watertight. We do IoT based grading and pricing so that in real time, we can actually convert farmers milk into currency, farmers milk into money so that the money flows into the farmer's account in real time. Cold chain management, uh, because milk is probably the most perishable crop on the planet, if you look at it as a crop. And if you want to eat paneer that melts in your mouth or a cheese that's Kanazwa grade, the cold chain has to be really good. Uh, how do you ensure that in an energy efficient manner, the cold chain you know, can be uh, you know, maintained? How do you ensure that you're also able to provide multiple inputs to the farmers so that he can buy his feed, fodder, nutrition, uh, agro inputs such as crop nutrition, crop protection, fertilizers uh, in a one-stop shop manner so that he doesn't have to run pillar to post to buy all of that. Um, so the, our tech platform that we have developed, the smart move tech platform that we developed, offers all of this in an end-to-end -end fashion, starting from the farm and pre-harvest and all the way to the consumer so that when you buy your you know, pouch of milk or cheese, you scan a QR code and it takes you to a Know Your Milk portal using which you know that it's actually now safe to be given to your kids at home. It's actually antibiotic free. It's really safe and fresh. That's the kind of power that our smart food platform provides. Well, thank you so much for those wonderful insights, Mr. Mukundan. I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And may I now introduce you to our next expert on the subject, Mayank Dhanuka, co-founder and director at Origo Commodities. Origo is India's leading agri-tech company that buys and sells commodities and offers custom financing. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Danuka. My pleasure. Well, take us through your entrepreneurial journey. Was there any interest uh, before starting this company? So, Mukta, as you noted, we've been in this business for the last uh, 10 or so years. Um, I'm one of the co-founders along with uh, Sunur Kaul. Um, so, Sunur and I started this business, um, you know, back in 2011. Um and when we first got into this business, the idea uh, behind uh, what we started was that we wanted to create a business which um, had a certain impact angle. Um, you know, both of us had spent a fair bit of time outside the country and we came back in the 2009-2010 uh, time frame uh, with the mindset of uh, creating a business which made a real meaningful difference on the ground. When we first got into this business, we... Um, we knew that agriculture and financing, which are two of the key words that, that uh, you used in introducing me, um, those are, um, you know, those two businesses are, you know, as old as, as, as practically mankind, right? Since, since uh, um, human beings learned how to, uh, to control uh, crop growth or control um, how we, we grow certain crops, uh, uh, which eventually became the practice of farming 10,000 years ago. Um, you know, financing soon followed as a part of that. And so these, these two businesses are not only interlinked very closely, but, but are very old in nature. Having said that, um, the one thing that uh, has been missing in this industry is that the supply chain, the, the agri-supply chain, uh, financing uh, uh, for which is an extremely important part, um, has not quite become as institutionalized in our country as it is in the West. Um, what that means is that, uh, you know, in most developed, developed economies, uh, you see the produce going from, from farm um, to the eventual consumer in a fairly organized fashion. Um, and you don't see a lot of different steps uh, in between that, uh, that link the two. Um, in India, unfortunately, uh, this has not been the case. Uh, not only do you find a large number of intermediaries, um, but you also find a lot of uh, waste um, at each step of the way. Uh, one of the reasons that um, you find a lot of intermediaries is because of lack of institutionalized uh, financing, uh, which is kind of what uh, we bring to the table um, as, as a company uh, and which was the motivation for starting this business. And that's only one side of it. The other part of the equation is, um, you know, where does this financing come from? And that's again where we're uh, playing the role of an innovator and, and, and thanks and no small part to Vivriti um, that we've been able to create some fairly innovative instruments uh, which 
bring the financing into this business, um, uh, you know, to the extent that we're eventually talking about um, uh, creating a green bond, uh, which could be distributed to retail investors potentially. And, and, and that would be a big change, game changer in, in how we do this. How do you see the space? What are the classic challenges and how at your end have you been addressing those? So challenges are multifold, uh, right? I mean, the the biggest challenge is the the vast disconnect um, between the capital markets um, and the ground level reality where agriculture is actually practiced, um, right? I mean, as you know, our, our, the difference the difference between our villages and our cities is, is, is there's a quantum leap between the two. And the challenge has always been to connect the two. The challenge really lies in um, making um, agri appealing to investors um, on main on um, um, you know uh, in the financing world on one side, um, and on the other side, uh, ensuring that people who need this financing, which is essentially the the farmers or the traders or the processors, um, you know, those guys are able to. Um, get a view on the other side of the wall as to, you know, so that they can see what is available to them. Right now, they, the options that they see available to them are fairly limited. Um, and that's largely because of just the way we've evolved as a country, we've evolved as, uh, you know, Agri has evolved as a business uh, in this country um, where um, financing in, you know, in small town India is still controlled by the local money lender. Um, and usually given out to farmers at, at um, very, very high interest rates. Not only is that um, a very, very disorganized way of financing any kind of a supply chain, the presence of so many people in the middle also leads to a lot of wastage um, across the agri supply chain as a result. Um, we have been able to bridge this gap uh, by acting as the party which brings both sides together. Um, our expertise on one hand lies uh, in our ability to procure any commodity from anywhere in the country and on the other hand uh, to connect with folks who are willing to finance this um, uh, this commodity or, or or the commodity supply chain um and and, and I think that's that's how I, I I see the future being I mean you don't um, find a lot of companies doing what we do. There are some, of course, I mean, there are some who played this role traditionally, um, some large Indian companies, some large multinational companies. Uh, but increasingly, you're seeing a lot of startups coming into the fray. You're seeing a lot of uh, uh, young folks coming into the fray, um, uh, trying to bring in a little more efficiency into the space, uh, trying to bring more financing into the space. Now, to give you a sense of how underpenetrated the space is, the total addressable market uh, for institutional fi institutionalized financing in this country um, runs into several hundred billion dollars, right? I mean, it's not just the size of the agri produce itself, but you can actually finance the supply chain at various steps. I mean, you could be supplying, uh, you could be financing cotton seed produce, you could be financing cotton bales, which is the next step in the process of production. Uh, um, the next step is converting that into yarn. So you could actually be financing it every step of the way. And as a result, the addressable market that you're looking at is three or four times the total agriculture production. Um, but when you look at the actual penetration of organized financing in this market, it's it's less than 5%. Um, so you can imagine that even if we were to double this market, the, the total amount of financing that you're looking at, the total amount of procurement that you're looking at through through organized channels uh, would double from the 40 to 50,000 crores that is the existing uh, uh, number today um, to you know several lakhs of crores um, if you could simply double or triple the market. And the, the beauty of being this business is that you, you know, growth for somebody like us doesn't come through taking business from somebody else. I mean, we often get asked the question that, Hey, who are you fighting against? You know, who are you up against when you're trying to win your business? Are you taking market share away anybody, uh, away from anybody? Um, but the reality is that that that's not required. I mean, this is the uh, the the growth uh, potential in this business is so high um, that nobody has to win by taking market share away from anybody else. Um, there is um, there, there are a lot of growth opportunities available to everybody, and um, you know, I think that that's a wave that people in this business are going to write for a long, long time to come.
Well, we've been talking about digital disruption as a common thread through these podcasts. What fascinates you about new tech in your space? There's a big difference uh, between the the kind of tech that you talk about um, on the pre-harvest side versus what you talk about on the post-harvest side, right? So that those are uh, the two sides of the uh, the agri industry. On the pre-harvest side, I mean, you see a fair amount of tech already being introduced. A lot of folks who are doing very very interesting work from uh, from farm surveys to um, um, you know, be it on the insurance side or improving crop yields. I mean, there's there's a ton of work that's going on. Um, on the post harvest side, things are a little different, right? Because um, you know, what is it um, that technology brings to the table? Um, I think what technology brings to the table is uh, not just higher efficiency and, as a result, lower transaction costs um, in terms of how we carry out our transactions. Uh, but it also brings a lot more security in which the way these transactions are done. You know, that, those, are, those are two extremely important aspects. Um, the third most important aspect, however, in my opinion, is how can you use technology to create um, higher penetration into this market? So if, you know, we are looking at um, volumes, you know, in terms of traded volumes, the, the kind of business that we do, um, we are looking at trading about uh, total trading volumes of about 1500 crores um, as a target for this fiscal year. And we're looking to take that number to about seven to 8,000 uh, crores or about a billion dollars uh, in two to three years time. Now, I can tell you that um, while our business may sound like a complete brick and mortar business, those are not the kind of numbers you can achieve uh, simply by having a presence on the ground. So I cannot depend on the team uh, that is purely feed on the street to drive those kind of volumes. Those volumes can only be driven through the use, efficient use of technology, right? Which essentially means that we should be able to create a platform where we are able to attract both buyers and sellers of commodities um, and offer them various financing options on that platform itself. Um, how that would work, I mean, is it's fairly simple, right? I mean, we're not talking about groundbreaking technology here. Uh, we're essentially talking about um, reaching out to people through digital means, um, converting those leads into actual business, and then essentially carrying out a financing transaction online. I mean, and that's one part um, of the business where I think we as a country have made tremendous um, um, progress. So if we already have that ability, we already have that technology in place, why not bring that to the fore when, um, you know, in agribusiness? And I think that's part of what we are facilitating. What we are creating at our end is not just able is, is not just the ability to to attract people to this platform, um, and of course offer them a platform which is uh, very very um, not only interactive but but also creates the kind of liquidity that both buyers and sellers are looking for, but also to do it in a very very secure manner. I think that's going to be key. Um, so a little more basic in nature, but I think still something that's very very nascent. Um, not being used by a lot of people. Um, and, and we certainly hope to be the pioneers in that. Thank you so much for this wonderful chat. I wish you all the very best for all your projects. Thank you so much, Margaret. The pleasure was all mine. And you all were tuned in to a very special podcast. Vivriti presents the Game Changer Summit in partnership with CNBC TV 18. Vivriti presents the Game Changer Summit.